Hello, Rich Spazano here from Digitally Feelers, and today I'm going to show you how you can create 3D effects in Affinity Photo. So let's get started. So first we're going to open up a new file, so say in File, New, and I chose just Web, the generic. And then the next thing I'll do is I'll go to Layer, and, hmm, New Fill Layer. And normally fill layers are solid, but you don't have to have it solid. So I'm going to choose up here in the drop down and call it linear. And what linear does is it brings these points in. So I'm going, I'm going to go from top to bottom. And we're just going to choose some colors. So I'm clicking on the first one and then I'll double click here and I'll choose a color and I want to be in the kind of a light pinkish maybe kind of a retro looking a pale pink maybe like that would be good and I'll close and then I'll click the next one actually I didn't have to close I could have just left that open and it would have given me the next one which I should have done so now I'm going to go into almost an aqua color I'm not even giving you the color numbers because it's a matter of taste. You can put any color you want, and I'm just choosing something to this effect. I'm just trying to get a color that I like. I think that might work. And so, so that's our background. Now we're going to type some text. So we get type, and I would like to choose a I would like to choose a script. So I saw one in mine. You can choose any script you want. I think it's called Hotel, Grand Hotel. There it is, Grand Hotel. And I'm going to just type digitally. Of course, it's um, a cheap plug. <laughs> for my site, for my YouTube channel, and I'll duplicate that and type fearless. And I think I want this, both of these to be white, so let's make them white. Make that one white. And I don't like, and I'm looking here, it has regular, but it doesn't have um, italic. So I'm just going to do that. If you put your mouse arrow right above, you'll see the arrows turn to sideways, like that two sideways arrows. So I'm just kind of going to play it by ear. And let's do this for now. I can always move them in place later. So, in fact, I'm going to keep this low and keep this one about here. Next thing I'm doing is let's start with digitally. Okay, we're going to duplicate digitally. Control or Command J. Right? And we're going to call this top digit. Top digitally. And we're going to lock it into place and hide it. And then this bottom one, I am going to give it a blue, maybe a navy, kind of a navyish color like that. And actually, I have to give the second one the same color. So I may want to go to the hex slider and see what number it is. And that's the number of the color I just happened to randomly pick. So I'm going to copy that number. And control or Command C so that when I do the second one, the field is... I'm going to do Control or Command J, and I'm going to call this one Top Fearless, and I'm going to lock that one in and hide it. And then this one, I'm going to change the color to that same number. So I'm going to select this the hex number. I paste the hex number in, and it's the same number. So for now, let's just take these top ones, keep them up here, and we're only going to work with the bottom ones right now. So here's, here's the trick to this. 
we should put digital on top of fearless because that's the way it is on my screen and let's do the same thing here so we keep consistent so let's get a close-up and you're going to do some counting so the top and the bottom are the same remember snapping has to be off so what we are going to do and I showed you this trick this repeat trick before in one of my other tutorials so look for that where it says repeat and what I'll do is I'm going to very carefully do not do anything but this. I'm going to do Control or Command J, which will duplicate this layer. And then I will move it up slightly, very slightly. Move up and then to the right. Very slight, like that. And now without touching anything else, you keep hitting Control or Command J, but count as you do it. So we're ready. I'm going to do, I'm holding down Control and Command and I'm just clicking J each time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I think that's good. So we just did 15. Remember that we did 15. Let's go back and let's take those 15. And that would be from here to here. We don't want the fearless one, and we're going to group them. Okay, and now we're going to do the same thing. Let's get really close to fearless. We're going to select it. We're going to Control or Command J. We're going to slightly move it up and to the left, up very slight and to the left, like that. Okay, and then 15. So we're going to do hold down Control or Command and just keep, yeah, and just <laughs> hold down Control or Command and click on J 15 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Good. And now we select the first one and then the last one and we group it. And then we Take each one of those, right click and say rasterize. And then this one, right click and say rasterize. So next we do, we have two ways of going about this. I'm gonna unlock these now, the top ones. Let's move the top digital on top of this one and move the top fearless on top of the fearless background. So let's turn on this one right now. Your 3D is facing downward. I prefer to face it upward, but you can decide whichever way you want. And we're going to help the effects of this later. So, or maybe we, you know what? Maybe let's try something else. Let's try this. And then that's facing downward. And maybe we want one to face upward. But no, I don't feel like that's consistent. So what I'm going to do is, yes, they're facing down, but I want them to face up. So I'm going to do that and have them face up like that. On the top layer, I'm going to give it the effects. I think an outer shadow. And let's see what we can do here. Let's, which one am I on? Digital. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't have the offset. I want to give it a little bit of a shadow like that. So it has a little bit of a 3D effect and I'm not sure, maybe an emboss. A slight, tiny, tiny emboss. I don't even know if I like that. No, you know what? Let's just leave the emboss off. I like the shadow. So let's select that. Oops, sorry. Let's select that layer, say edit, copy, or you can do control or command C, and then select the field. Uh, the fearless layer, top layer of fearless, and say edit and paste effects. So now it has the same shadow on it. So now let's go to the second part, the bottom layer. And so let's start with digital. That's now we're on this blue layer. We go to effects, and I'm going to give that also an outer shadow. So let's kind of do that. Um, by the way, I'm on this angle, which should be close to the angle. 
which is with the way we actually made it. You can change the angle if you, if you happen to move it the other way, you can change it the other way. But um, this is close enough. This is the angle we're on anyway. And that's the way we made the 3D. So let's leave that. So I'm giving this a slight shadow. I'd like it to be like really faded like that maybe. And I also think it should have an inner shadow. Let's see what that looks like. Let's go inner. It kind of gives me a little bit up here of a shadow, which I like. It's, so it gives more of a 3D effect, I think. So let's see. Let's see how much intensity. Just a little bit. That's not bad. And so now, once again, I'm going to select that layer, edit, copy, select fearless layer on the bottom layer, edit, paste effects. And it now has the same shadow. So, so far, so good. Um, now let's, let's group each one. I want to put them into place. So now that they're grouped, actually, I'm, I want to save this first. So I don't, I'm going to just overwrite my old one. I want to save it in case I crash. You should always be saving regularly. Okay, so now that I group these, let's move them into place where we want them to be. I kind of think I'd like something to this effect and let's move them more to the middle so next I want to give it a marble effect so let's select this top digitally fearless layer and add a new layer to that on top of it and let's go to I want to go to a texture brush and this is here's your basic brushes you should all have some kind of texture and you can choose whichever texture you want. I'm choosing this one. I think it came with Affinity. It's number 230. And I am going to make my brush black and fairly large, like maybe like that. And I'm going to, oops, I want it to be black. And I'm going to just keep tapping. See how I just make this crackle? And I want to make sure the crackles are hitting all the letters. In fact, you know what? I am going to move this pixel layer to the top. I don't, I could do them both at once here. So let's just do this. And we'll mask it later so it only affects the letters. Just like that, I am maybe a little back on the bottom here. We need some veins. And I think that may work. So now we're going to control or command click where it says digitally to select that top digitally and then hold shift and do control or command click on the top of the letters for feelers. So the tops are selected and now we go to this pixel layer and we click on mask. And then we deselect Control or Command D. And now we have a little bit of a marble effect. And so I think that works. So what I'll do now is I think I'll group these. Now we just need to make it really look like it belongs where it is. So I'm going to put a new layer on top of everything, a pixel layer. I'm going back to my basic brushes and picking a very soft brush and I am going to pick a brush and I want it to be I'm not sure this is the exact color so I'm just going to click I want it to be the color of this top so I'm choosing that just to make sure and on with a soft very big soft brush I'm just going to kind of click over everything just kind of like this Just easy and soft, barely noticeable. I'm also going to make another pixel layer and get the same brush. And I want to choose the bottom blue and make it, put it there. And now on this half, I want a little bit of blue. 
Now I'm going to take these two and group them. So now what I'm trying, now that I have these two colors, I only want them really to affect what's going on in here. So what I'll do is I'll control click, not on just the top layers, I'm control clicking on these two groups. So I'll control click on this group. I'll control click on this group. It picks the whole thing. And I'll shift and control click on this group. So it's not just picking the top, now it's picking all of them. And I'll go up to this, which is the colors we just added, and I'll put a mask on it. And we'll deselect. And then I think we're going to turn this layer into not pass through. Um, I think color dodge maybe or linear light. It's it's so subtle. It's you can't. I don't know. Maybe color dodge. I'm thinking you know linear. I'm going to do linear light, and I don't know if you can even see the difference. But you see that's before and that's after, and I'll even tuck the opacity down a little. I just need to show that there is some reflection of the 3D of what's going on. Like here, you can see there's a little bit of this pink reflecting onto the blue, and it gives it more of a 3D effect. So I think we're done. I mean, we can always play around, give it a frame, make it look like interesting. But the point of this tutorial is Affinity Photo can create 3D effects sort of. So, so uh, if you like this tutorial, please click like and subscribe and have a good day. Thank you so much.